Greetings. Today I'm just doing a video on the Panasonic S5, the menu system. I've been using the Panasonic for a few months now and trying to familiarize myself with the menu. It's very different coming from Canon and it's like a different operating system. So I'm just going to go through a few things that I find important for, for myself and this will be just covering the uh, photography settings, not video. So first off, I'm just going to go uh, into the menu here and I've just updated the firmware. So we can see here the version 2.7 on the firmware for the Panasonic S5. This is where we go to update the firmware. So to start with, I'm just going to go to the top and come across and these are the things I find important for myself. The photo styles, so we can come in and adjust these settings. So most of the time I'm in standard or I will use natural profile, but most of the time I use standard and use a color checker if I'm taking portraits. So I'll just scroll down and you can see I haven't changed anything except for reducing a little bit of sharpness. And if I come up here, I just scroll across and you can see the different options there for picture profiles. Going into the video modes now, options for vlog. So I'll just go back there. The next one is the metering mode. So go on here, this is important. Uh, depending on what you do with your photography, uh, I have this set in my Q menu. So if I just come back here, I have our Q menu here and I have this set up uh, to have my metering here. So if I want to change it, from the center weighted where I use most of the time to the the hollow weighted metering so I'll just turn that back so this is not a how to to set up the Q menu there's other videos explaining how to do this but this is just for myself and if anybody's using the Panasonic S5 finding the options to in the menu that I want to access and learning it so I can access them quickly. So I'll go back to the menu here. The next one here, aspect ratio, uh, I find important for myself. So it's set here to the 35 millimeter film. So if I come down, we have it grayed out here. If you want the panorama mode, it's grayed out. So if I, at the moment, I'm set on multiple shot. So if I change it to single shot, you can see there the option comes in. So I'll come back here and if I change it to the multiple shot there it's grayed out so don't have access to that in the multiple shot. So if I turn it back to the single it's available there and it's set. If I take a photo there's the panorama view, the crop. So if I come back to the menu just turn that back to the 3x2 and back to the so I'll turn that back to multiple shot next I'll go back to the menu and the picture quality is important to know what you want to set I just set it to raw plus fine the high resolution mode I've used this a few times it's, it's good to know where it was in the menu so if I go into the menu, I'm not going to explain how I set this up. There's other videos that do that, but uh, if I'm going to use it, I'm going to use the larger size and I have it on a second delay. So if I, I'll just click start so we can see what's happening. I'm focused on the, the road mic there. So I'll just let that run. And there we have our high resolution picture. So if you want to end, you can see there Q, instead of doing it over and over again, just hit Q to end that. I'll just go back into the menu. I'll just scroll down. I do have uh, vignetting compensation on. 
is one of the important things that I, I wanted to find was the AF assist light. I wanted to turn that off when taking photos of people. I don't want the, the assist light hitting them in their eyes, so I turned that off. Also, the focus peaking where that was, because I do use focus peaking on the uh, Panasonic S5. I think most people that use the Panasonic S5 probably use this feature. Also, the uh, the speed of the AF. I'll just scroll through this. I'm not too worried about this. Here, uh, the silent mode. If I'm taking photos in a service or I just don't want the camera to make any noise or very little noise, I'll select this. I'll go back to the Q menu and you can see here I have that selected. If I take the photo, very little noise. If I turn that off, we're back to the normal mode. Yeah, also the image stabilization I have in the Q menu here. So if I set to order at the moment, I'll just turn that off because we're on the tripod. It was good to know where that function was. So I'll just scroll down. Uh, time lapse, I've used this a few times. Uh, I haven't a lot of experience with it, but there's a lot of things in here that uh, I don't use and I just want the basic functions of the camera when I'm taking photos. So I'll just scroll through these. So back to the start there. I'll go down to the, the next menu. I'm not going to cover this. I'll do a second video, maybe down the track of the video settings that I use because it looks very different in video compared to how I set up photo. I'll just come down to the cog here. Come up to the top here. So I'll just scroll through these. I'll just come to color space. Sometimes I'll use the Adobe RGB. Most of the time I'll use the sRGB for the JPEGs. So I'll just scroll down here. Continue. I'm not too concerned about this. A lot of this stuff, but I I do want manual assist. So if I click on set. When I come down. I have set. I've set it to the joystick. So if I scroll down here, you can see it's set to on. I flick it over to manual so that's my point of focus if I want to focus over there I'll just move but here focus on the road and if I move the press the shutter button if I just move the lens nothing's happening but if I press on the back of the button here we can see focus and if I want a larger screen, I can just scroll the wheel to the right and it will fill the screen. So then I can get a bit of focus and then you can see the focus peaking working there. So I'll just press that to go back. Next, I'll come down, scroll through. This is one of the important uh, buttons that I, that I wanted to find was the shutter AF. So if I turn this back to the continuous and I set it here, I'll just make that a little larger. So I have it set to off. So if I turn this on, you can see the front shutter button is now focusing, it's turning green, but I tend to use back button focus and I wanted to turn that off. So if I go back into the menu, click on that and turn it off and now the front shutter button isn't focusing. I don't want to have the front shutter button continuously uh, refocusing when I've set back button focus and, and I've got my focus set in and then we're good to go. So the other button here, sorry the other part in the menu, the half press shutter, we can go in here and if I focus and instead of pressing it all the way down, you can just, it's like a half press, it's very light. You can take the photos like that as well. There's been a lot of options within this menu. It's quite a lot to cover and for myself, I just want the basic functions. 
uh, to work the camera and get my exposures right and uh, focus in, in the basics. So I'll just scroll down here. The Q menu, Q menu is uh, important for myself to, to know where it was so I can set my C1, C2 and C3 um, different settings. So of course we have our Q here. So if I'm in uh, C1, uh, it looks like this. And if I go into C2, you can see I have it set up differently. In the movie mode, I have uh, very different settings here. I may do another video on this later on. So I'll back to C, C1, go back to the menu. I'm not too concerned about the rest of this here. Scroll through. It's good to know where constant preview is and make sure I have that turned on. I have the histogram on by default. As I say, I, that's how I use it for exposure. I also have the waveforms on, but that's more for video. So I'll continue to scroll through. Scroll through this one, this one as well. Here, the vlog, the view assist, this is good to know for video, but uh, just covering photo here. I come down also knowing where the zebra patterns are for exposure. Also, the waveform of a vector, vector scope. I, I use the waveform in the video, not for uh, photography. So I'll just scroll through. That's it for that list. If I go to the first one, this is a very important to know where the where the card reformat is so I can delete all the images once I've transferred them to the computer. Scroll down. Here another important one. Uh, the monitor backlight. So if I'm outside I tend to turn this up so it's much brighter and when I'm inside I'll turn this down. Continue through. Here I turn the beeps off. There definitely good good to know where that is also the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth I've used the tethering app on a device and just starting to know or learn how to use it uh, I don't have a lot of uses for it but it's good it was good to know where these two functions were here as well in the the cog on the wrench icon to save custom modes so if I make a change in C1 the photo mode and I'm more regularly using the auto ISO or if I've set it to ISO 640 uh, I can set that in the in the custom mode so it just does that by default so it's good to know where that was and I'll scroll down to the last one here the clock set of course when you first get your camera here the pixel refresh I found important. I was getting a few red pixels on my images and I used the refresh and it solved that problem. And we're back to the firmware version. So here I don't concern myself with, with these ones here. So that's a look at the menu that I, the things that I wanted to go in and know where they are so I could be familiar with the camera. Peace be unto you.